going on everyone and welcome back along to the channel. It's that time of the week once again. It is time to have a look back and forward of Super Rugby over rounds 10 and 11. And this time finally back onto the guests. We have a special one this time. It is Paul coming in from the driving mall. How are you going? Thanks for joining me. Hope you're well. Uh, all good and uh, thank you for having me. Yep, the, the people love the guests, so giving the people what they want. And if you haven't seen what the driving mall's done, uh, do you want to give them a brief little rundown of what you do, videos, all that sort of stuff? So if they don't know who you are, they can go check you out where to find you. Yeah, so I'm an independent rugby pundit, is how I like to put it. So, uh, yeah, you can catch me doing Twitter's mainly my thing on at driving mall. But I guess as you're all YouTubers, you'll be what I'd also have a YouTube channel called Driving Mall. So check me out there. So predictions and opinion. So opinion about three or four times a week and my predictions each week as well. And he does it a lot faster than I do as well. <laughs> about, what, 10 minutes as opposed to my two-hour videos? It's oh, like... yeah. It's, it's not, not, yeah, about five minutes for a prediction, about eight, to, about eight minutes, minutes for a uh, for an opinion. So, so this could be quick. He's lightning. He's lightning. That's all right. We'll get through it. So as always, we're going to have a look through what happened last week. And then go over, of course, the uh, picks from the Subaru site, which... You're involved in as well, which is good. We'll pick our holes and hopefully you went down a few places <laughs> so I don't look so bad. <laughs> and then, of course, we have a look forward to round 11 of Super Rugby. So let's not beat around the bush anymore. Let's get started into it. As always, before we kick off having a look back, we have a look at how many yellow and red cards we are up to this season. Now, if you've been tuning into these since the start of the year, you'll know how many we had last year, and of course, how well we're doing this year at reaching the quota of smashing 2016. So, so far, have this update here. 84 yellow cards and 7 red cards. That is an astronomical amount. We're going to smoke 100 at this rate without any problem whatsoever. Um, special guest to the show. What are your thoughts on the yellow cards? Do you think there's too many? Do you think... It's, it's fair. Do you, what, what are your thoughts? I know if people are new to seeing you, what, what do you think about it? Um, I'm a bit surprised, actually, because last year everyone was kicking off saying how there are too many red cards, too many cards, how it was ruining the game, etc. And this year, everyone, no one's talking about it. Everyone, I think it's just now accepted. It's a new norm. You're going to get a card a game. Um, and so be, be ready for it. And I'm a bit surprised that people haven't aren't kicking off more about it. You, you've got year old people who, 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 who bang on about it, going, let the boys play and all this kind of stuff. But on the whole, I think it's now accepted you need it. And it's and all the commentators are saying, yep, by the law, that is a yellow card. And this kind of stuff, whether we believe it or not, I think it's right or not, is, is it's kind of gone out the window. It's just me banging on about it. I seem to be the, the only one <laughs> leading the charge on Twitter. Too many yellow cards. Now, there's a lot compared to like recent time, but... Uh, just quickly, your thoughts do you, on the referees this year. We'll probably talk about it more later. But do you think they're consistent this year? Uh, a lot of general consensus of people I've talked to saying that they're really inconsistent this year, more than usual. Uh, quickly, what do you think? I, I disagree. I, I think they're, they're as usual. Um, every year everyone goes, oh, they're, they're more inconsistent than ever. Uh, no, they're not. They're the same as always. They're human. They make mistakes. No big deal. Interesting, interesting. See how the people in the comments like that. Well, as always, let me know what your thoughts are on the referees and consistency of the cards and everything this year as well. In the comments below, as per always. Um, so, of course, round 10. We'll have a look back at these matches quickly before we have a look forward. Uh, it all kicked off uh, in Dunedin. The Highlanders were in action. They are up against the Stormers. Now, this was anticipated to be quite a close game. I think many thought, you know, the Stormers might give the Highlanders a bit of a run for their money. Didn't turn out at all like that whatsoever. 57-14, that's thrashing by the Highlanders. I was surprised by that. Were you? Yes, I was. Um, I think the general consensus is the Stormers didn't do that much badly. They weren't playing awful, um, but they just weren't playing well. And they just couldn't cope defensively with what the Highlanders had for them. And the Highlanders clicked for the first time this season. They haven't been clicking at all. Um, and I think a lot of that came down to Aaron Smith. Aaron Smith uh, has clearly got over his uh, disabled toilet incident and is now back to his best. Some of his passing uh, was days of like picking people out through traffic. It was great. Uh, and I think we've missed that and we've not realised how much, how key he is for the Highlands. Yeah, uh, if people have been tuning into my channel and my Twitter for a while, you know that I'm pretty much, uh, very much pro Aaron Smith. I think he's the best halfback in the world by 
quite some margin. A lot of people think he's not, even in New Zealand, he's not. Is he number one for you currently, yeah. right now? After that game, yes. Before that game, yeah. no, he hasn't been. He, he um, at, on on form, he is the best best scrum yeah. half in the world. Um, but he hasn't been on form until until this until this week, uh, and um, so yeah, now he's he's back up there. He's back up there. Yep, he's my man, number one, Aaron Smith. Um, second game of the weekend, it was the Chiefs versus the Sunwolves again. Another surprising result, this one. I expected these scorelines to be swapped around uh, between you know, the Highlands and Stormers game and Chiefs and Sunwolves because that's the way I thought these games were going to go. Complete opposite. Chiefs eventually did get the win, as they've done all season long, really. But since the start, the first few weeks, they haven't looked their best. 27-20 over the Sunwolves, who are on the road. Not convincing at all. I was surprised by that as well. Uh, were you surprised by two results in a row? Uh, yes, I mean, bit, I, I wasn't expecting this close. I, perhaps I should have been. Um, when you think they had a rookie, uh, rookie halfback, uh, um, and they had no half, they had no scrum half cover on the bench, so the injuries really are are telling. And as we just seen with the Highlanders, how key number nine is, uh, we perhaps shouldn't have been quite so surprised that um, having a nine there really did make it difficult for them to get the ball wide. Yeah, we'll talk more about the Chiefs and how they're only just winning their matches uh, later on when we look at next uh, round's matches for this weekend. But that was a close one for the Chiefs. I think they should be counting their lucky charms that they actually got that victory over the Sunwolves, who, yeah, they look good on tour, and you can't fault them for their efforts as well. So that's a close one for the Chiefs. Next up, we're over in Australia. <laughs> oh, 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 the Reds and the Waratahs. Um... I'm not going to say anything about this one. 26 29. <laughs> I'll leave it to you. How do you make of that one? Um, well, basically, p p penalties won over over turnovers and drop ball. Um, the Tars <laughs> just couldn't hold on to the pill. Uh, the Reds were a much better side, but they just gave it so many penalties, they allowed the Tars to kick themselves to victory. Uh, essentially, uh, the, yeah, the, the Tars didn't deserve that win, um, but the Reds, you, you can't be giving up. Um, 16 penalties to four, and expect to have a, 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 a expect to come away with, with 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 a win. Do you think they're the two worst teams to watch in Super Rugby? At least the Waratahs. <laughs> <laughs> On that game, yes. I mean, that, yeah. well, that maybe. I, I the I, I've not got the I've not got the stats up for the turnovers. But I remember looking at it at the time, just thinking, guys, you're just. Please just hold on to it for more than like three phases. It was awful, and they've basically got three good players, and everyone is everyone else is is is, is, is pants. You've, everything good attacking comes through Foley and Flau, and as long as you don't let Hooper tackle you, you've got a chance of scoring. Is really what it comes down to. Um, but yeah, that I, I was just flabbergasted that how the Reds threw that one away. Uh, is and yeah, the Reds just just don't know how to win. And yeah. with the with the squad they've got, that's just criminal. I think we might need to have a discussion with you and the cannon on there as well, speaking about the Waratahs, because I know all the guys out there, all the viewers out there watching, they want to see the cannon back to talk about the Waratahs and the state that that team is in. So I'm working on it. I'm working on it. Trust me. He'll be back. Just, just be, be careful. Back he'll, he'll be froth, frothing at the mouth. And he's going <laughs> to... Oh, dear. Yeah, so is his team. This is what they look like when they're out in the field. God. Anyway, so that was 29-26. The uh, Waratahs somehow got over the Reds in that game. Uh, next up, we made our way over uh, to Western Australia with a force were in action. They're up against the Lions. Now, I saw or heard before this game mixed reactions or mixed predictions is more the word about what was going to happen here. A lot of people thought, no, the Lions are going to pounce this one quite easily. Others thought that the force had a sneaking chance. Um... Probably more chance than I thought they had to. I thought the Lions would actually do them on their way to start their tour, but it didn't turn out that way. 15-24, the Lions getting up by just nine points, which I think credits the force uh, quite a lot to how they played. How did you see that one? Well, this is one of two games where a team has got a, 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 a win bonus point with um, by, by shutting out the opposition and scoring very few points. Um, we'll come on to the other one later, but... The force just couldn't get over the whitewash, um, and if you if you and kicking penalties, okay, fine. The Tars did it against the um, uh, against the Reds, but it's not going to win you many games uh, in in Super Rugby, and that's basically what this came down to. The, the Lions kept out um, the force 
scored a couple of tries themselves, a couple of moments of magic, um, and that was enough. And that's what um, I think what we saw more last year than this year that games were coming down to a moment of magic. You looked at the stats and go, how the hell did they win? Um, you're not seeing that so much this year. Occasionally, you do, but that's what this one is. This one was about basically not letting it, good defence and then um, a couple of moments of magic for me from the from the from the, from the lines. Yeah, I've been impressed by the Lions as well because ever since that game against the Stormers, where everyone was expecting the undefeated Stormers, you know, to, to hit the road and take on the Crusaders for a big island undefeated battle. The Lions, their defence just turned up. And I think from then they've been from a good team to like a really good team. And, and actual, if they can sort out where they're going to play, playing at home much like last year, they are really contenders for this competition. But we'll talk more about them uh, later on in the preview for that. Alrighty, so next up it was off to South Africa where the Cheetahs were up in action. The poor old Cheetahs were up against the undefeated Crusaders. So the score on that one was 48-21. A bit of a thumping on the scoreboard. Um, the Cheetahs seem to have really lost their way. Um, all this news about them. Still no real decision about the future of the Cheetahs. But their form isn't doing themselves any favours. Uh, but you can't really blame them going down to a team like the Crusaders. Do you think their scoreline was fair uh, between those two sides? Oh, it probably was. And I think you, you know the inevitability of the result when everyone's talking about Reed's broken thumb rather than, it, rather than the score. Um, so the, yeah. I mean, the Cheetahs are Curry Cup champions. They were undefeated in the Curry Cup last year. Yeah. They are, go or, or if they survive, they are going to be a decent side. They're the Lions mm. three years ago, three, four years ago. Yeah, exactly. So yeah. They, they are on the way up, but it's too early for this kind of stuff. And... Yeah, if you're going to give the, um, the Crusaders getting an early try, but eight missed tackles, 43 missed tackles in this game is criminal, and you're going to get you're going to get thumped if you missed 43. I mean, I must compared to Aviva Premiership and UK, there's, there's a lot more missed tackles in Super Rugby. I mean, the, the Crusaders missed 23 themselves, but 43 is just way too many at this level. Yeah, that's, that's a lot of tackles we missed um, in a match, no matter what level it is. Especially, you know, this this is like next tier to international sort of rugby especially in the southern hemisphere and you expect a lot better performances by that but you've got to look stats like that make you look at it and say the cover defense the shifting defense is obviously a lot better as well and adapts a lot more to two line breaks and things like that in the southern hemisphere because of that sort of style that they play but the crusaders here yeah, like you said reed's uh, broken what thumb was it or whatever he broke that was a big big news out of that game and Really, a big thumping like that. The Crusaders, old. they'll be happy with the result, but um, they would have liked to have come away a bit more unscathed than they did. But a big win. Uh, they continue their trick on undefeated. And following that, we went on to, I think, my favourite game of the round. Um, only because it was the Mighty Kings up against the Rebels. Now, I've bagged the shit out of the Kings at the start of the season, but I'm now a believer. I'm a believer in the Kings. I am impressed by the Kings and what they've done. I think they have some talent in that team. Now, don't, don't shake your head like that in disappointment. <laughs> they thumped the Rebels, 44-3. How can you talk down the Kings? Tell me. Okay, if the Kings can hold on to any players and have any semblance of a squad that looks anything like this season, this, this, this group next year, and if they're around, of course, then there's something's going on. But at the moment, it's a, it's a, it's, this isn't the Kings of last year, because they all left and went and played for somebody else. This is a this is a brand new team, um, and it, who knows what you're going to get out of them week to week if you're going to bring a new team in each year. Okay, so yeah. um, they 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 I mean, they're still bankrupt. They're, they're still have, can't get themselves a um, a, a committee together, uh, and they've got um, Doug who is who who who's, who owns the failed pro rugby. In, uh, in the USA coming up, up to buy them. It's just a total basket case off the pitch. That's why I shake my head. Um, great game for them. Yes, absolutely. Uh, they were just more uh, more cutting than the Reds. And then their back three are quick. Um, and if you give them space, they're going to have fun. And in the second half, they did. Um, and the first half was only 11-3. And it was, it, this was this was an all-second-half game. And yeah, they blew them out of the water and had a great time. And the Rebels didn't help themselves when they dropped one line out on their own line. Uh, and gifted the Kings a try, uh, and the, the Reb uh, how the Rebels have gone so downhill compared to two years ago uh, really is upsetting. I really, that I had an interview with one, with one of their coaches a couple of years ago, and I thought 
here are the guys, here they are, they're coming out, they've, they've had a breakthrough season, they've got their culture right, they know who they are, they're no longer these Danny Cipriani's and all these Galactico kind of players, they've got honest players who are playing well, and they will do it, they will look like they're going the right way, but it's all just gone pear-shaped, and I don't know why. It's, it's weird, you talk about a couple of years ago, what about last week, when they actually got that draw, you know, against the Sharks, it's like, you look at that and go, wow, shit, the Rebels are on tour, and they've actually got a Look, to be fair, on tour in South Africa, that's a result. A draw is a result, especially for a team like the Rebels. That's a result. And then to go, you know, a week later, get thrashed by the Kings, who have, have developed. And, and you know, I, I see what you're saying about behind the scenes here. Yeah, they are a complete nut and mess. But um, I'm impressed. Like, these backline players they've got are just tearing the game up. And, and when you look at all the players from the Kings last year that have actually shifted... And they're littered around other South African franchises and actually performing pretty decently as well. It just makes, does my head into think, you know, what this team could have been if they had some sort of retention system, you know, but that is another topic for another day. Big win though for the Kings. Um, I was super impressed by that. I was happy as the Kings did that. I like, I, I like to see the underdog win. I guess it's a sort of New Zealand thing with most sports down here, maybe. I don't know. Except for rugby, we suck at pretty much everything else. So good win there, the Kings. Now, off we went. Uh, to Argentina. Now, this was an interesting result. Jaguars or Jaguars against the Sharks. This one, 25-33. Now, that shocked me a bit. I, I backed the Jaguars to get that win. I thought they were going to do it at home. But the Sharks, inconsistent, but they got the win. They did. I mean, the uh, Jaguars won their first three home games. Uh, this is their first loss at home this season. Mm. They really were um, looking like They'd learned the lesson from last year and were looking, making good strides ahead. I, I mean, I, yeah, I picked them. Um, I backed them to win this game ahead of the Sharks. But uh, in the end, um, the, yeah, the, the Sharks did see it through. They they, they dogged it out. Uh, yeah, you, sometimes you don't know. I mean, again, this was one of those ones where you look at the stats and just go, really, I can't see what this was about. Um, and my, the only thing I could pick out, really, I, mean, I, watched, I, did, I did watch the game over breakfast as well. But for me, it just came down to where on the pitch you gave it your penalties. If you gave it kickable penalties, you lost the game. And that was what it came down to. Um, the, the, the the Jaguars gave the Sharks shots at goal, um, not from not from very, very not from more not from giving up more penalties, but for just doing it in the wrong part of the pitch. Whereas the Sharks mm. were, were we gave up their penalties out out of range, and that's what that's what this one came down to. It really was fine margins, uh, much finer than the than the scoreline suggests. And positive. For the Jaguars, no cards, which I think is a positive because that last year, that was just their suicide note right there. Every match, there was at least you know a card or a red card. Uh, it just killed them off. This year, especially the latter part, the last few weeks especially, they've been a lot better. And that, that I think, is, is the first hurdle. At least they're competing, you know, and they're getting close enough to these top sides like the Sharks. I think the Sharks are a good, good threat this year to do something decent if they continue on but last match of round 10 it was the brumbies versus the blues blues are your team the blues got the win talk me through it they did uh, but, but why weren't the blues out of sight uh, they absolutely dominated the first half but just couldn't score any points um the brumbies didn't help themselves by kicking to the corner late in the first half when they should have gone for sticks i mean mate, you're not scoring tries much at all just take all the points you can get get, get your hands on as, for, as far as the Brumbies were concerned so they didn't help themselves but it was interesting that we did see both these sides to kicking sticks whereas I think there's been a trend this year in Super Rugby to, to just go for tries just kick to the corner the whole time um, and you look at uh, quite a lot of the, uh, especially the New Zealand sides your Chiefs your Hurricanes they pretty much never kick sticks anymore they always go for the corner um, and I tell you in the stands especially around by me at Eden Park, we just go mental when people don't take three points. Um, so it was a bit surprised to see it happening here, um, that, that it was against the trend. But having the, the Blues just were, were just, they, they, they really should have been scoring more points in the first half and should have put this one away. It doesn't help that they're on to their third choice fly half already um, in Gatland and Gatland couldn't hit the side of a barn. Um, this, uh, so he, I think he missed pretty much, he made like one conversion. Um, so the Blues should have had a it should have been a much more comfortable win for the Blues than it really was. Uh, this is this was flattering for the Brumbies. Yeah, the Blues were definitely the much better side out of that matchup. I clearly agree with you there. And 
yeah, they let, they let the Brumbies stay in it. And they should have never been in it getting to that late stage of the game whatsoever. But 18-12, the final score, the Blues picking up the win by the slenderest of margins. But that does wrap up round number 10. So just over, one quick yep. thing to talk about. Again, yep. the Blues picks up the, the try bonus point from this oh, one. Oh, yeah, they did too. Um, by just getting three tries because the opposition got none. And, yeah, my key stat from this one was defenders beaten 10 by the Brumbies, 40 by the Blues. Jeez. And they didn't. And they only won by six, po by six points. That was a disaster. That, that's a huge difference, yeah, to beat those round tackles. Uh, and only win by uh, six points. That is, that's, no, that's terrible. The Blues, it's positive, though, for the Blues because they're showing that they can at least create chances. And they're making line breaks. They're getting through there. But just... The finishing, I mean, you got the finishes that they've got. It's it's a surprise. It's really shocking that they don't finish more. But they got the win. And I guess, really, on the road in Australia, you should take it. That is all you need to do is take the win from those damn Aussies. Right, moving on. Back to back to schedule. We're off to Subaru. We're off to see how your picks did and to see if you are at least moving up the leaderboard like I hope I am this round. Alrighty, so having a look at the Super Brew picks following the completion of round 10, there's one man still leading the way, and the scummer got the yellow cap as well. So he's really opening up a big lead now at the top in the number one position. Caleb 42N, give us a chance, man. You're sitting away at the top by yourself. It's like, come on. You're going to canter away with this whole league in a minute if you keep this up. Uh, Devin's done well, though. He's moved up a couple of spots into second, which is seeing... Axel go down the other way down to fourth and we got Wagger still in third so a bit of a mix up there but still you can see the cream is rising to the top slightly we move on further down and we have our guest here today driving Mawson down in the 11th now come on give us the secrets what's what's all this good picking up to oh dear well yeah this just, just stick your finger <laughs> in the air and make a choice mate um if you overthink it you get it wrong I, I mean uh... especially I, mean, I nearly flipped my pick for um, Highlanders Stormers last weekend because I because I was just I just overthought it. I could think about it. Hey, they've done really well. Okay, they've had a couple of bad games, but you know, hey, they could do this. The Highlanders not been too hot. Now nah, forget it. Stop thinking about it. Just go with your gut feel. That's what yep. gets you there. Yeah. The fewer times you change your picks, the better off you normally do. Uh, unfortunately, even though I didn't make my picks once and never change them ever, I'm still way down in 31st. Uh, not impressed. Yeah. See? Not impressed with that. Doesn't know what, don't know what you're talking about. That's a problem. <laughs> yeah, you'd be spot on. I have no idea. I just come on and ramble. That's all I do. But at least I didn't drop five places like the Scottish Cannon did this week. That's right. I'm calling him out again for poor performance like his Waratahs. At least they got points from this week, though. He was quite chuffed with that. Um, further on, who got the wooden spoon? It was Nafty. Down in 34th, dropping uh, three spots with the wooden spoon. Um, so that's poor performance from old Nafty there. So we'll have a look now. Caleb's leading the way in the predictor. Who is leading the way? Hopefully not still in the fantasy team. Okay, so on to the fantasy teams. And we have a new leader who is a newcomer to the league. MFCFO's Blues, another Blues supporter possibly, has stormed straight to the top. And that means that the awesome transgender sloths How's that for a name? Rate that name out of 10 for me. <laughs> awesome transgender sloths. Come on. That is amazing. They are now second. And it means Johan M123 Storming Rangers. Again, creativity. Sit in third. And this one is the best of all. Dicks out in fourth. How about that? <laughs> but the biggest thing about this is Caleb42N got the yellow cap again. What? This man is ridiculous. He's going to have to be, yeah, special guest next week. Caleb 42N. He's got the golden picks. It's time to put him out there. Caleb, get in touch. I'm here to talk to you. Further on down, where's my team gone? The All Flakes falling down to 27th, which is not good. But again, I can say I'm calling out the Cannons. Down three. They're 31st, so they're going down. The All Flakes are higher than them. But still further on down, Wooden Spoon is right at the bottom, and it's called Bath rugby are great. Doesn't that just sum it all up? Absolutely. Gee, that's a... <laughs> He's at the bottom wooden spoon. That is the bottom of the barrel. So Caleb gets the yellow cap once again. And it is newcomer the Blues at the top. Let's have a look at round 11. Alrighty, so this is the big part of the whole episode. It is the preview for round 11. 
of Super Rugby. We have some cracking games this weekend. Of course, a couple of teams with the bye. That is the Brumbies. Won't miss seeing them around. But the Kings. Oh, my new favourite side. The exciting Kings will be out of action this week. Rejoicing. Hopefully having a big party to celebrate getting a win in Super Rugby. But we still have a pile of games to get through. So let's kick things off. Westpac Stadium. Friday night. It's the Hurricanes who are back up in action. Now they're up against the Travelling Stormers. And the Hurricanes, of course, just coming back from the bye. Still only one loss in the bank as well. The Stormers, on the other hand, having a tour from hell. Getting smashed by everyone. Conceding a boatload of points. It seems like the leaking ship. Can they plug the holes against ironically named ships and hurricanes? It doesn't seem good, but can they find a way to do anything against these hurricanes? I don't think so. I mean, they've, they're at the end of the tour. They'll be knackered. Mm -hmm. They'll have had enough. They're coming up against another team that is going to expose the same weaknesses that got exposed last week. Um, you know, TJ Perinara, who's... Okay, he's not Aaron Smith, but he's a, still a top-notch... Um, scrum half pulling the strings uh, with Bowden Barrett and the what killed the Stormers last week and it's going to just kill them again so yep home win all the way um, I've gone by 15 points but that's probably being uh, kind of kind 15 points yeah I haven't gone that kind whatsoever I've gone Canes by 37 I've gone for a thumping another thumping I like the Stormers I really like their team they're a good team on paper but they just hate to tour the, the South African teams, South African teams, just hate coming to New Zealand. They don't even like going to Australia. Even there, they probably would struggle. Well, as we've seen, struggle to get wins there already. Um, great team, but the Hurricanes, you know, rested up. Uh, all the big guys there uh, just could get really nasty. The Stormers, like I say, end of the tour. They don't want to play rugby anymore. They want to go home and, and restart things. They want to, you know, back before they lost a match. Like, how do you go what, six rounds, seven rounds without losing? And then bang, bang, bang. It's all just a big tragedy of, of dominoes skittling all over the floor. Uh, I've gone, yeah, Canes by 37 for me. Uh, it's going to be it's gonna be nasty. I think you'll find the Hurricanes are probably throwing on substitutes with a 20-point lead. Uh, unlike the other New Zealand teams, they seem to know how to get to lead and you know, build it up. And, and you know, the Chiefs can't do it. The Blues struggling to do it. And that's going to be the difference here against the Stormers. So, Big, we're going big. You're going 15 for that one, is that right? That's right. I, mean, I, I, I rarely go more than 15, uh, but, um, but but that just shows that, uh, yeah, I'm, I'm pretty confident with home win there. <laughs> I'm confident it's 15 points. So what, what does that make my 37? <laughs> <laughs> That's all right. So we've both gone with the Canes to win at home to open up the uh, round 11 on Friday night. So second match of the weekend, we quickly move on to, uh, we're up to three, Free State Stadium, actually, which is, it's a bit rare to see a Friday night game uh, in South Africa. They don't get too many over there, but the Highlanders, have made the big travel across to a Free State Stadium where they are facing, of course, the Cheetahs. Now, this one, um, I don't know if it's going to be what's going to really happen here. I'm kind of a bit torn here because the Cheetahs are a team at home, always dangerous, always capable. We've talked about it already, what they've done, um, what they've got in the bank there. And, of course, the Highlanders on the road in South Africa, it always does funny things to teams on, on the tour bus and... I don't know. It's a tough one to pick, but I'll let you go with your thoughts on who you think is going to win first. It's a pretty simple one to pick. Um, the, the Cheetahs have got two wins all season against the Sun Wolves and the Bulls. And the Bulls, I mean, I've seen them uh, at um, North Harbour Stadium. They're poor. Um, so, <laughs> um, so this look, this is going to be a, a win for the Highlanders. The Highlanders, um, because it's a Friday night, obviously they going to be one less day travel than they've had than they've had uh, than the normal. Um, Ben Smith hasn't travelled with them, so that's one of their attacking weapons uh, not there. But they've still got too many attacking weapons to not win this one. Um, I'm going Highlanders by 10. Uh, but as I say, as we said earlier, the Cheetahs, it's a season or two too early for them. And uh, this is this will be a Highlanders win, but I don't, maybe not quite as uh, emphatic as some might think. Yeah, see, to me, you sound confident, but your prediction doesn't sound too confident. Because I think it could be a fairly close one. I think, yeah, I was going to ask you about Ben Smith, but you brought it up already, so you beat me to the punch. Uh, the thoughts of Lima Sopawanga, well, there was um, talk about him returning this week, but I'm not 100% sure if he is going to be or not. Um, probably would be a huge addition if he is back, but just the travel, the day less, South Africa, it just says a lot of things there that could really 
kick up this Highlanders team, which have looked really good at home. But I think the tour is going to be a real test to whether we'll see what the Highlanders can do this season, um, if they really are contenders or not. The Cheetahs, probably not their ultimate test, but still, I'm going Highlanders as well. But for me, saying it's gonna, I think it's going to be close. I'm still saying by nine, and that's close to me. You're confident, and you're already saying ten. I, I say I, I'm, I'm conservative with my gaps, so but in, so as as long as as long as Aaron Smith gets through the airports um, safely, he is he, he'll run the roost, and it, this is going to be an away win. <laughs> He's never going to let that down, is he? He's never going to live that down uh, ever. Uh, so we're both going for Highlanders to get that win, nine and ten points. That's pretty close. Uh, poor old cheaters, probably another L going in their record following round eleven. So, moving on, we move back to Australia now. It's Saturday night, Amy Park. The Rebels versus the Lions. Now, the Lions, well, no, the Rebels, I should say, first. The Rebels, we saw them uh, last round, of course. They're up against uh, my good old friends, the Kings, and we're terrible. But you, you've got to look back. I'm, I'm looking back a week before that as well, as we talked about before, against the Sharks. Inconsistent. What can they do at home? The Lions weren't too convincing, but I think... The Lions are going to build into this this tour if they can keep their confidence high, which obviously getting the win last weekend would have done for them getting it up there as well. Um, they should be far too good um, for the Rebels by far. Um, how conservative are you going with this one? <laughs> so, again, which Rebels is going to turn up? Is it going to be the side yeah. that beat the Brumbies or drew against the Sharks? Or is it going to be the side we've seen the rest of the season? So it's going to come down to that. I, I I think it's good. I don't, I'm not expecting anything out of the out of the rebels. The Lions, um, everyone's sort of bit down on the Lions at the moment, and I don't know why. They've lost one game when they rested everybody and didn't take anyone to Argentina. That's the only game they've lost. So again, um, and that was because they didn't take players with them. The Lions are a great touring side. They're one of the best touring sides in Super Rugby, which is is, is wrong. Is is just unusual for a South African team. Mm -hmm. Two years seasons ago, they lost like they're opening f three four games. Went on tour, won three games, and bang, they were suddenly they were there. Last season, they they kicked, they, they started the season with a tour, um, beat the um, Chiefs in Hamilton from memory. Um, yep. The Lions are a good touring side. This is a comfortable. This 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 is this is this has got a um, a, a way win all over it. So Lions by ten. By <laughs> ten. Okay. I, so for me, an absolute definite. But put put the house on it. It's fifteen. Um, ten is a comfortable win, and, and three, three is where I'm not quite so sure. So yeah, this is a, um, this is a Lions win. I, I'm hoping we're going to have some close matches so I can see a team by two or something <laughs> in your picks there. But it doesn't look like we might be having that. I'm going. What am I going for? I'm going for the Lions by 15. So um, I'll put the house on it according to these <laughs> predictions at the moment. Uh, but I, yeah, I agree. I agree with what you say. Lions. I reckon the Lions are real contenders again this year. Um, you could talk all day about it. And they've built this team up um, from the whipping boys from a few years ago. Now they're what they are. Cheetahs, same sort of similar role that they're doing now. But sadly, will we get to see that from them? But the Lions, they're going to be real, real contenders this year. And yeah, 15 for me. You're going with 10. Nice and safe by both of us for that one. Okay, next up, we're off to Yarrow Stadium. An interesting uh, change of venue here for the Chiefs. They're up against the Reds. Oh, the Reds. I, I just, just like talking about the Reds. Every time we get to this, and it's just the Reds. Uh, I think the Reds are improved since they've got Quade Cooper back. I think he's really sparked the team up uh, with a lot of creativity. Still got a bit of magic dust, old Quade, uh, as much as it pains any New Zealander to see that or say it. Uh, and against the Chiefs team, I think, I think what they seem to be doing, the Chiefs, is playing towards their opponent. So... They play like their opponent plays. If they're playing a really good team, they lift. If they're playing a rubbishy team, no offense to any sides, but they seem to just play to that level that they're playing at. Is that how you see it? Is you, do you have my opinion on that, or are you going to throw it out the water? Um, <laughs> throw I'm it out the water. That, but they, they, <laughs> they, they are struggling, and it is def they're having injury issues, clearly. They're just not, they're not getting the platform. They're not, got the, they're not getting the service they need, and they're relying on a bit of Mackenzie's magic um, to see them through. Mm -hmm. I mean, they're missing players like um, Charlie Nasai, who they must have thought they were going to have uh, in the centres there, along um, with ALB. So they've not. They, they, all their combinations are just not there. 
Um, and with no combinations, it's hard to get yourself going. Uh, and that's what I think the problem is. They're just lacking those combinations. I think Messam's out as well, hasn't he, for a while, or, or uh, and, and Leach. Um, so the, you, you, your spine of the team is just is kind of is 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 missing, uh, and that's the problem for them. They're still only lost one game. Mm-hmm. Right? So even 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 though we're, we're bagging them here, uh, the Reds, let's be honest, don't know how to win. I've said this earlier. Um, great team on paper, but they are a collection of individuals. And I think the big problem in Australia at the moment isn't so much the players, it's the coaches. Um, and it, it, we're seeing it here. We've got a, a, a first-year coach um, who doesn't really know what he's doing. And, and we've got the same thing down in, in the Tars. I think that's what's causing the Tars a problem. Again, is, is a coach there who is not really up to scratch, hasn't got the um, experience behind him. Um, and so, yeah, this is a home win. I'm going by seven because of the gaps that the Chiefs have had over people like the Summers, etc., I can't see the Chiefs losing, but I can't see. But I don't think they'll win by big. Yeah, the Chiefs. Where I was going to go with that, they they've still got plenty of quality in their team. Though there's still a whole pile of players who would be playing at Super Rugby level anyway. It's not like they're calling up half of the you know Mighty Ten Cup side um, to fill out their starting fifteen. There's still there's still a quality team. There's still all blacks in there, and I I just think. They just don't have that uh, experience or leadership in there with the few players missing on field that is uh, sort of guiding them off. I'm not 100% sure, but they just seem to do enough just to get the win. Whether that's through good management or the opposite, I haven't quite determined that yet. But I'm still I'm still jury out that the, the Chiefs are going to win that one uh, quite convincingly over the Reds. I, I don't rate the Reds whatsoever, um, except for when they're playing the Waratahs. Uh, I've got the Chiefs going by 11 on that one so i'm going rather conservatively for me but that's still comfortable in your picks as well so uh yeah chiefs by 11 um but should be should be a decent match i expect the chiefs uh should probably run up a few tries at least hopefully against this reds team who like to say individuals i've been impressed by the likes of higginbotham though um in their pack probably one of the only ones um in that team but yeah a lot of problems in that red side they've got to really iron out and you segued nicely as well into my next point, which was going to be with the Waratahs. Now, they're up against your side, the Blues. Uh, that one is at Allianz Stadium uh, in Sydney. Uh, a lot of the blowtorch, you could say, is firmly uh, going on Daryl Gibson's head at the moment uh, with how the Waratahs are performing. Uh, a lot of people now starting to actually call the blame on him. He got away with it for, I think, quite a while. Uh, there's a lot that he probably should have felt the heat on a lot sooner, but... Are you obviously by your comments just before you are putting the blame mostly on him for the way the Tars are performing? I don't know if it's on him, or, but the yeah, I, I can't. We've got a lot of first year coaches over there, uh, the same the same across over the force as well. And you're about to have a brand new coach at the Brumbies, it's all looking a bit of a problem. And they don't have my attend cup, the guys who are for the NRC, which is only a couple of seasons old anyway, um, are all doing it pretty much for free, and they're not getting paid for it. It's not. It's definitely not um, your full-time job. It's quite often one of the um, reserve coaches for Super Rugby will be the head coach uh, for the NRC. So they're not getting the experience before they get the Super Rugby coach of running a team properly. And that's a big problem. These, these guys just aren't ready for it. And that, so um, it's nothing against him, Gibson per se. I just don't think he's had the, the, right, um, the right experience, the right background before getting this kind of role. And I just don't think the New Zealand, uh, sorry, I don't think Australia has got the structures and the pathways in place for their coaches. Do you, what do you think about the whole way that he's dealing with Israel Folau? Now, my thoughts are he's really their, their primary attacking weapon, Australia's primary, real best attacking weapon. Um, alongside likes of Foley, I think is in pretty good nick as well. He's just lacking a lot around him. Um, but the whole centre and fullback thing. I, I don't know why he has ever been played at, uh, at centre after probably one or two matches ever again. Um, I think he's a million times better at fullback, a million times more dangerous. Um, what are your thoughts on that? Look, he is a he's got the natural skills to be a good rugby player, but he hasn't got a rugby brain, right? And so, he, if you if it'd be really interesting to sort of look at where someone like Ben Smith positions himself throughout a game and look where Falau is and how much further does Falau have to run to catch every ball? 
how much further does uh, how often does he put a kick in that's that's the right thing so yes you want to get his, the ball in his hands as often as possible attacking but he's not in the right places and he just hasn't got so I don't know where I want to play him I, I, there's a, a, a whole bunch of suggestions to be whack him on the wing and just tell him give him a roving role that way he doesn't have to be covering uh, the to all the sort of kicking duties a fullback has to do doesn't have to do the defensive duties that a 12 that a, sorry that a 13 has to um, and that way he gets to do basically just walk all over the pitch and just be in the right place at the right time to attack um, so I'm, I'm not at, at that that to me I think is perhaps the role to kind of give him is actually stick him on the wing and tell him just don't stay there just go for go go for, go for a stroll all the time yeah I think that's what his best attribute about being a fullback is is that he can join the attack at what point he sees to be the best to attack it rather than being set at second or third receiver you know in the centers where he's going to be or in a set play you know he can just roam free at fullback but i do agree with what you say there about the defensive duties of that um and the kicking part of it isn't really his best part um wing yeah wing does suit his skill base quite quite good it'll be interesting to see if they ever do put him there um for any you know substantial period of time to get get a bit of knowledge about what he could do uh in that role but i think they just seem obsessed with playing him at center which i just cannot for life of me work out but on that match though i've got the blues by 16 did you get your pick on that one <laughs> i didn't give you a pick on that one i went blues by seven look the blues have been <laughs> the blues have been every um overseas opposition they've lost to new zealand opposition and i think that yep. trend that basically that's that's the trend i'm following that i think we'll see um to me against the brumbies they just couldn't score the points they deserved uh and so that's why i don't think it's going to blow out to a big margin but i think they'll win it yeah, I've got, I've got by 16. The Waratahs are headless chickens, and I'm going for the Blues to actually score some points for once. But if, um, you don't, if they don't get Piers Francis back, who's going to do the kicking? That's the thing. It won't matter, because so... I just score tries. Faith in the Blues. <laughs> Putting my faith in the Blues. Well, it's not like the Waratahs are going to score many points, are they? Go no, on, no, I'm saying, could... the, 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 the Tars aren't going to win this one. The Blues will win it. But, as I say, I think you, you're not going to see the points you'd expect because the Blues aren't executing... Um, as well as the other New Zealand sides, so they're not getting the points you'd expect from the from the from the possession and the territory. Um, and I say, uh, if Pierce Francis isn't back and we're and we're relying on Gatland, who can't kick, then we're then there, there's a whole bunch of you're leaving six to ten points on the uh, on the field, and that's the difference between our two predictions. Yeah, that yep, the fair point there on that one for the poor old Blues, but I do agree. They'll still take the win, and that's probably the difference between 11th position and 31st position, is those bloody <laughs> margin bonus points. I tell you, that's what it is. Okay, moving on from that. So we've both gone for the Blues. We make our way back over to Durban now, where the Sharks are in action against the Force. Now, the Sharks are a bit up and down hot and cold. I think they're a good team. They're good enough to beat pretty much most of the teams in the competition, but they're probably inconsistent enough to lose to them as well. And the Force, I don't think they're going to trouble the Sharks in South Africa, but I think the Sharks could probably downplay this one enough to give themselves a bit of a fright, is my thoughts about this one. Um, I think that the Sharks are probably going to wake up a bit here at home. They need to do it as well. Um, I've got them with a win, the Sharks. Now, I won't tell you my margin because you'll probably fall out of your chair, but <laughs> go for your own. Okay, the Sharks have only won by more than 10 points once all season. Ah. Okay, um, uh. and that was at home to the Tars. So, clearly, <laughs> you've gone for too many. Um, we'll they, see. <laughs> so, it's going to be a single point game, uh, but, so, but you are right. I can't see, the Force are going to be lots of passion, very dogged. Uh, but I see it's been a home win. I'm going um, Sharks by seven. By seven. I don't know if I want to keep my pick the same now. I'm going by the Sharks by 28 points. They only beat the Tars by 23 <laughs> at home um, back in round three or four, whatever it was. So, look, that, and that's the only time they've got more than 23 points. They just can't score points. They are your kicking South African side. They're what you thought the Storms were going to do this year, but haven't. Just out of principle... I'm leaving my pick like that. <laughs> <laughs> we'll see what happens. Uh, yeah, we both agree. I think that's pretty cut and dry, that one. Uh, the Sharks should be far too good. I think the Force, uh, yeah, like you say, they'll be that tenacious team. They'll have all that determination in there to, to kick it out into gear. But the Sharks should be far too good at home. And they'll run away with it. 
heard it here first. Big win for the Sharks, all you Sharks fans out there. You'll, you'll get in there and support me. I know you will. I know you're out there, people. Okay, we've got to move on from that. Next one, uh, still in South Africa. We're into Pretoria now. Off to Loftus, and we're seeing the Bulls <laughs> versus the Crusaders. Now, you've already talked about the Bulls. Um, not much of a fan. They're back from the bye. Uh, they are at home. Um, there's not much going on for the Bulls at the moment. There's not really any chance of them um, you know, getting that second best or that first place, second place side in South African groups. Confuse the shit out of everyone watching this. Um, so there's not really much going on for them. They're playing for pride. They're playing for not much else. And the Crusaders, as they'll now be referred to as the Juggernauts, uh, will just cruise on. Big one here for the Crusaders, I think. Oh, the Bulls, irrelevant, where they're playing, what they're doing. Um, I've got a similar margin on that one, but really? once again, I'll just wait. You've gone below 40? I'm amazed. Okay. Oh. Um. <laughs> Should we consider, actually? So, here we go. Let's, 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 <laughs> let's give you the counter, the counter argument. The Bulls have, lost, have won their last two games at home. They're on, they're on a, they're on a, they're on a, they're on a winning streak. Oh. Um, they were over the Hagbaris who can't travel and the Cheetahs, to be fair. But okay, no, you're right. This is a, this is an away win. The Crusaders are going to win this one. Um, it's pretty simple. But um, I, someone did has has put on my my YouTube prediction. Uh, reminded me, reads out with a broken thumb. They've lost Whitelock to suspension for his uh, funny uh, for his hit to the head. Um, so they are a couple of forwards down. They're, they're not. They're not going to have eight All Blacks um, in their scrum. Uh, but then again, the Bulls are missing Pollard. Um, I'm so I've gone Crusaders. That's about all that matters with the Bulls, anyway. Is Pollard? I've gone Crusaders by fourteen. Fourteen. That's not quite putting the house on it, though. That's just that's just this is putting the, the front yard on it. I know. Not I, the full house. So, so I think. Well, yes. Yeah, but so this is <laughs> <laughs> this is a uh, yeah comfortable away win uh, for the Crusaders. Uh, for, for my book. So I'm going to mix it up. I'm going, amazingly, I'm going for the Crusaders to win this one by less than the Sharks will beat the Force. Yeah, yeah. You know, it's, it's super rugby. The amazing happens here. I'm going Crusaders by 27. <laughs> over the Bulls. That's my pick. <laughs> Heard here first. One match left to go. We've both gone Crusaders. Cruzy win. Last match of round 11. Hagwares versus the Sunwolves. <laughs> well, let's, let's, they're terrible. We, we go, yeah. let's go on history. The Sunwolves have won every single game between yeah. the, between these two teams. This was this was stunningly kind of spit out because it, it's it's hard to describe. They're a team. If you look at that on form and how they're going, yeah, the Hagwaras should smash them. You know, they, they're pretty dominant at home. Apart from that last match against the Sharks, they've been looking good. Sunwolves, they've been around New Zealand. They're going over to Argentina before they get to go back home. I mean. All the signs are there saying that it should be a decent win for the Hagwaras, but oh, come on. They've, go had, they've played close. once before um, in Japan, and uh, we knew. Not, I mean, last year the Hagwaras just couldn't travel. Um, so, let's be honest. Yeah, the Sunwolves are coming back after a three-game tour of, of, of New Zealand. They're absolutely dead in their feet. Um, the Hagwaras have had two games at home. They've actually had their home cooking. They've had a nice. They got the comfy beds. Um, this <laughs> has home win all over it um so but I, to be fair to the Sunwolves, they have looked um much more organized and much more dogged the Jagu the hangaroras aren't clicking they're not getting the scores they should do i think perhaps it's down to a few players being intervened so, um, sanchez has been out for a few games this season um hernandez has as well so um i'm not sure if they're both both back for this game but um so I'm going, it's definitely a home win, but I'm going for Jaguar, Jaguars by 10. By 10. He's going with the 10-pointer. I'm going with your house on it pick. I'm going by 17 for the Hagwires to get the win. Um, I think the Sunwolves will take a lot of um, positive or a lot of confidence from their last performance in New Zealand before they left away. Uh, they played pretty good, but I think a lot of their game, as it always is and seems to always be in Japan, uh, is based around how good their import forwards play. Like you see the likes of Billy Brits has been pretty massive for them. Uh, Sam Wikes as well has been another one who has been pretty instrumental to how that team has performed. Um, if those guys can lay the base, as the old you know cliche of rugby goes, you know you got to win the game of forwards. Blah blah blah. You know we've all heard that. But with the Sunwolves, that really does base their game on how those guys perform. And I think that's Japanese rugby in a nutshell. But 
um, on how most of their teams really perform. Um, so if they can get those guys going, you know, we could be into a decent match if they both throw the ball around, give it a bit of air, you know, they both like to attack on the day. It could be an entertaining one, but I'm going with the Jaguars by 17. Good win, big win, putting the house on it again. My house is going to be gone by the weekend, I tell you. I'm putting it on every single match so far this weekend. It's going to be terrible, but that is it. That is it. We're done. Final match of the weekend. As always, <laughs> another mega Super Rugby preview. This is terrible. I am terrible at time management. That's all right. That is round 11 complete. We've had our picks in. Make sure you get yours in as well uh, on the Super Brew site so you can uh, look silly as we just storm up from 31st up to the top. Don't worry. It's going to happen sooner or later. Uh, thanks for joining me as well. Um, your thoughts have been very, very, very interesting. A very contrasting side to my own, I think. Very much so. I'm, I'm a very uh, open in my margins, but that's probably why I'm not doing so well. Um, you want to shout out to anything before you head away? Uh, any other avenues for people to get hold of you or see your stuff? No, just remind it. Um, yep, check out my YouTube channel. It's Driving Mall. You'll see my opinion on a whole bunch of things. Uh, latest one, what did I talk about yesterday? Oh, yeah, it was about the uh, different strengths of different countries in Super Rugby. So that's on there. Uh, and or the other place to get me for a chat is Twitter at Driving More. Sweet as thank you very much for joining me on this. Let me know what you guys all thought about his opinions as well. If you agree, disagree, whatever, it's all just our opinion, my opinion, uh, and your opinion as well. So make sure to leave yours in the comments below as per always, and I will see you all around in future. But until then, take care.